shortly after 5 p.m. on the 6th of April, 2006, Halit Yozgat was found dead behind the counter of his family-run internet cafe in Hollandische Straße 82, Kassel, Germany. This was the ninth in a series of ten killings targeting mainly migrant communities across Germany between 2000 and 2007. The perpetrators were later identified as members of the National Socialist Underground, or the NSU, a neo-Nazi group whose core allegedly consisted of three people. The only surviving member of those three, Beata Czepe, currently faces a criminal trial in Munich. During the police investigation into the Castle murder, it emerged that an intelligence agent of the state of Hesse named Andreas Temme, was present at the shop around the time of the murder. He did not disclose this fact to the police, but was later identified from his internet records. In 2015, many of the police records documenting this investigation were leaked. Police reports, witness testimonies, computer and phone logs, and site photographs were made public. Amongst these files was a crucial piece of evidence, a police video showing Andreas Temme's reenactment of his visit to the shop. He sought to demonstrate how he had missed seeing the body of Halit as he exited the shop. Forensic architecture was commissioned by the People's Tribunal, a civil society initiative working with the families of the victims to investigate the validity of Tema's testimony. What time did the murder happen? Where was Tema at that time? Could he not have witnessed the incident? Could Tema's testimony and reenactment be truthful? If not, larger questions could be asked. Working from leaked photographs of the crime scene, we constructed a digital model of the Internet Café. Within those 77 square meters, different actors, the victim, his killers, and the state employee were architecturally disposed in relation to each other. The shop was thus a microcosm for the larger political controversy that ensued. We reduced the model into its most relevant elements and built it as a full-scale installation at the House of World Cultures in Berlin. We then undertook a series of experiments within both the physical and the digital models. Because the murder took place in an internet cafe, every witness was connected to a time-coded device, a computer, or a phone. We located each digital device in the model and constructed a timeline from the login data. This created the space-time matrix within which different possible events could take place. At about 16.30, Halit Yozgat was alone at the counter. The first to come in was 16-year-old Ahmed. He saw Halit at the counter, paid him for half an hour internet access, and went to the back room where the computers were located. He sat at PC7. At 16.46.03, he logged in and started to play Call of Duty, a popular World War II-themed game where players shoot Nazis. The second to enter the shop was 14-year-old Emre. He also paid Halit 
and went to the back room. Emre sat at PC3. At 16, 48, 58, he logged in. He had also come to the cafe to play Call of Duty. The third person to walk in was Hadiya and her three-year-old daughter. She sat at the telephone booth between the two rooms. She would make two phone calls that afternoon. Phone logs record the start of a call within the minute and the end of a call within a second. The last person to go to the back room and log into a computer was intelligence agent Andreas Temme. He said that he parked his car directly in front of the internet cafe. He then entered, saw Halit at the counter, and went directly to the back room. He sat at PC2. At 1650, 50, 56, he logged into the dating site ilove.de. His username, Wildman70, was what later revealed his presence in the internet cafe. He logged out at 17.01.40 and took one minute and seven seconds to exit the shop according to his reenactment. The last person to enter the shop was Faiz. He was the last person to speak to Halit. He was also the only person to have been in the room when the killing took place. Faiz made two phone calls that afternoon. His first call started at 1654. And his second finished at 1703 26. When Faiz entered his phone booth, Halit was alive. When he exited, roughly nine and a half minutes later, Halit was already fatally shot. All witnesses present at the shop heard these distinct sounds. Tema was the only one to have told the police that he didn't perceive any exceptional noises. Where was Andreas Tema when the shots were fired? His position in space might suggest his level of culpability. There are three possibilities. He could have been in the back room, in the front part of the shop, or he could have already left the shop. Scenario 1. Could the murder have happened after Teme had already left the internet cafe? Andreas Temme logged out of his computer at 17.01.40. According to his reenactment, it took one minute and seven seconds for him to look for Halit, place a coin on the counter, and exit the shop. This leaves 39 seconds from the time Temme entered his car to when Faiz finished his call and left his booth. Is it possible that the murder happened within these 39 seconds? We measured if 39 seconds is long enough for the necessary sequence of actions to take place. We reenacted the following sequence. Andreas Temme leaves the internet cafe. and enters his car just missing Halit. Halit walks back to the shop. 
He sits at the counter. The killer comes in, shoots twice, turns around, and leaves. Faiz finishes his call and exits his booth. We combine these actions in a highly coordinated and controlled experiment in which each action immediately and seamlessly followed the other. This sequence amounted to 35 seconds. In a real-life situation, however, there would need to be sufficient time gaps between the separate actions for the characters to miss each other. Our reenactment establishes that those gaps could not add up to more than four seconds without some of the characters or events overlapping. This fact renders the scenario very unlikely. What makes this scenario even less likely is the fact that Halit would have had to be out of the shop when Temi was looking for him, and back at his counter before the murderer came in. However, with five customers inside, it is unlikely that he would leave the shop. Furthermore, no witnesses reported seeing Halit outside. Foreclosing this possibility altogether are the call logs of other witnesses. Hadiya testified that she heard the sounds of the gunshots after she began her second phone call. The connection came immediately then. I suddenly heard three sounds. Three times it went tack, 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 quickly one after the other. As if somebody was knocking against the wall of the room. Faiz testified, Around the time of the first call, I heard something like a balloon exploding. I was busy entering the pin from the maxi card. I tried to look through the slot on the side. According to his testimony, the shots were fired before his second phone call went through. Faiz is the only one that saw the killer. For a short moment I noticed something, somebody going in or out. I think the person went out. His face I couldn't see, he was looking towards the table. He was in a hurry. These testimonies reduce the possible time of the murder to between 17.01.00, the earliest Hedia could have started her second call, and 17.02.00, the latest Faiz could have started his. The evidence thus discounts Scenario 1, in which Andreas Temme had left the internet cafe by the time of the murder. Scenario 2 Could Andreas Temme have been in the front part of the shop at the time of the murder? As mentioned, Andreas Temme logged out at 17.01.40 and took 1 minute and 7 seconds to exit. According to Faiz's and Hedia's testimony, it is possible that the killing took place within the first 20 seconds after Andreas Temme logged out. This possibility is supported by the testimony of Ahmed, who could see Tema from his seat. Ahmed claims to have seen Tema coming in with a plastic bag. It was not fully packed, but something was in there. I believe it was rather heavy, pulling it down. The police thought that it might have been the gun. He also claims to have heard the sounds of the gunshots after Andreas Tema left PC2. I had been on the internet for 15 minutes when I suddenly heard a muffled sound. In my opinion, it came from the direction of the entrance area. It was very loud and sounded as if something had fallen to the ground. I am very sure that it was not more than two minutes after the man had passed me. If the murder happened 
within the 20 seconds after Tema logged out, he would have still been in the shop according to his reenactment. And possibly colluded with the murderer. Scenario 3 We examine the possibility that the killing took place when Andreas Temme was still sitting at PC2. This scenario agrees with witness testimonies and is endorsed by the court in Munich. However, Temme said that he didn't hear the shots, that he didn't smell any gunpowder, and that he didn't see Halid's body behind the counter when he left. To check these claims, we undertook three sensory tests. To test whether Teme could have heard the gunshots from his position at PC2, we contracted weapons experts in Arizona to fire and record the sound of a Cheska 83, the murder weapon, using the same ammunition. The experts recorded a series of gunshots. This is the CZ no suppressor. They then compared them to the sound signature of three other guns of similar caliber. The weapons all generated equivalent peak sound signatures ranging from 157 to 158.5 decibels. Out of those guns of the same caliber, the Colt 32 was threaded with different sound suppressors to simulate the suppressor used in the crime. This is the Colt 32 with a wet suppressor. None of the gunshots were suppressed below 130 decibels. In Berlin, we placed a loudspeaker at the position of the killer. Together with acoustic experts, we played the recorded gunshots in the physical model and tested whether Temme could have been able to hear the shots from his position at PC2. Measurement one, high level gunshot. Start now. Measurement end. Measurement two, gunshot, start now. <laughs> Measurement end. The sound at PC2 was clearly audible. We then simulated the gunshot within our digital model. In order to corroborate the results, we repeated the experiment within a digital model of the physical installation in Berlin. The data from both the physical and the digital tests confirmed that the sound level at Andreas Tema's position at PC2 was between 94 to 99 decibels at maximum level. This is 40 to 50 decibels above the maximum ambient sound level that can be expected in such a space. For an eighth of a second, the volume of the shot would be as loud as a jackhammer and would have been clearly audible by Andreas Temme. When leaving the internet cafe, a few seconds after the killing, Andreas Temme would have passed through a cloud of residual smell from spent gunpowder. We tested whether he would be able to perceive it. We simulated the volume of gases produced by the CZ-83 gunshots.
A digital simulation established the particle dispersal and the latency of smell. Whether Teme would have been able to smell the residual gunpowder depends on the chemical composition of the powder, on the concentration of particles within this cloud, and whether the gun was fired openly or through a plastic bag. The model simulated the fluid dynamics of airborne ammonia particles resulting from two browning 7.65 mm bullets shot openly. The cloud marks the aerosols that are at a higher concentration than the common threshold of perception. This simulation suggests that if the shots were fired 20 seconds or less before Teme logged out, he would have been able to smell the ammonia as he moved through the front room. We then investigated whether Andreas Tema could have seen the body of Halit as he exited the internet cafe. Andreas Tema claimed that he did not see the body as he left the coin on the front desk. Aided by motion detection software and analog measures, we recreated Tema's police reenactment digitally to establish his moving cone of vision. We repeated this test in the physical model with a camera attached to the head of an actor. Witness testimony places the body in this position. We also tested for other positions in which Halit could have fallen. All body positions would have been visible to Andreas Teme as he bent over the counter. Out of the three scenarios, we have determined that scenario one, in which the murder took place after Andreas Teme left the internet cafe, is not possible. The evidence does not exclude scenario two, in which Andreas Teme was at the front part of the shop when the murder took place. Scenario 3, in which the murder took place while Andreas Teme was still sitting at PC2, is also possible. In this case, he would have witnessed the event. This story suggested layers of violence, misrepresentations, and cover-ups. Halit Yozgat was murdered on the 6th of April, 2006. 20 days later, Andreas Teme reenacted his experience of the event.
we reenacted Temi's reenactment to discover it was yet another act of violence, potentially a crime in its own right. Halit's father, Ismail Yozgat, repeatedly asked the court to no avail to visit the shop. If you conducted an inspection of the shop, you would be better able to see for a fact that Tema is making up stories. There are two possibilities. Either Mr. Tema himself killed my son, or he noticed whoever it was who killed him. But the state no longer considers Tema a suspect. This, together with the reluctance to unravel the NSU complex, amounts to the continuation of violence by other means. <laughs>